It's Hot Nozzle Summer Weekend. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yep, Hot Nozzle Summer Weekend is here. In fact, this is the last day of it out in the deserts in uh, California. FAR, the Friends of Amateur Rocketry, are doing their event right now. People are getting their level one, two, three certifications out there. And we're doing stuff right here at home. Hot Nozzle Summer was a movement started on Twitter, turned into, uh, a, just kind of blew up uh, like a supernova. And at hotnozzlesummer.com, the explanation for it all is as follows. Hot Nozzle Summer is a movement within the amateur rocket community that seeks to break down the barriers that exist within the hobby and make it more accessible to new people regardless of skill or training in rocketry or engineering. This movement celebrates all aspects of rocketry, whether it's getting a level one high-powered certification through NAR or Tripoli or just shooting model rockets in the backyard with your kids this summer. You do not have to come to the live event to participate in the movement, but it will be fun. We're going to have fun here today with these rockets that I built. Let's take a closer look. So I've spent some evenings this week and uh, about 12 hours yesterday working on these rockets. And the newest one is the V2 that I did. That was from a file on Thingiverse, which I will credit in the uh, description down below where you can get the files for that and print it yourself. It is made from ABS. It's painted and has a parachute in it that I made myself. More on that later and a little bit more on the construction of it later. So there's that one. There's the Supernova, which is an Estes model. It has a payload section. I've got my altimeter in there. And this one is a two-stage rocket. So the red part holds the first stage engine. When it goes off, it sends out a flame front to the main engine, ignites that, and it continues to go higher. And of course, there is Sky Candy, the one that I launched a couple of weeks ago. That's the first rocket I've built in a gajillion years. And this is just such a fun hobby to get back into. And the big difference is when I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of pocket cash to go buy rockets with. Now I've got a job and a budget and I can spend money on this stuff and actually need to be careful because it's easy to go overboard and spend lots and lots of money. Let's take a look at the equipment that's coming along. This is my field box. It has engines and igniters and some other goodies in there to do field repairs. I've got my uh, launcher in there. And I also converted this old tripod to be able to accommodate a 3 16th or 1 8 inch launch rod. And that way I can raise it up to more of like a waist level. Much easier to deal with that way. You don't have to be on your hands and knees on the ground hooking up the igniters. I'm going to be shooting with uh, some other camera equipment. That little thing right there is to hold my cell phone. So uh, there's that and the rockets and of course this tripod to hold the camera we're shooting on right now. So it's time to load all this stuff up in the car and get to the launch site. As I mentioned earlier, the files for the V2 were found on Thingiverse. Someone who has a handle of MechG uploaded them a few years ago and it's a modular rocket. It takes about anywhere between 12 and 15 or 16 hours to print, depending on what resolution you do it at. I printed it on my Creality CR-10S, and it came out pretty well. I had to tweak the settings a bit to get everything to work out just right. Um, the Z-seam works out best if it's in one location rather than random. If it's random, it makes lumps and bumps everywhere on the surface. There was a, lots of sanding that had to get done afterwards, um, fitting things together and sanding them all at once worked pretty well. I started with like an 80 grit, worked my way up to like a 320. Then I primered it and painted it and put some decals on it that I made. And I even made a parachute for it as well uh, that I, I found uh, some plans online for that. Made a parachute out of some ripstop nylon which uh, worked out pretty well, as you'll see. It did a pretty good job. And um, I had to make the motor mount, of course, and fabricate all that under. I had to also make the rings for it that I 3D printed. So it was pretty interesting. It's the first rocket I've ever made. 
that was 3D printed and there's quite a few of them out there so I invite you to go explore Thingiverse and see what you can find. As I mentioned down there in the description is a link to the files for this V2 if you want to build it. So uh, there's a little bit of an explanation of what went on with that. Let's get off to the flying field. So this is the location. Doing a little off-roading here in the Nissan Leaf. <laughs> This whole area just recently got cleared out. It was full of longleaf pine trees. This has got to be like about a 30 acre site. It's going to be a park at some point. There's going to be soccer fields here and some facilities and such. But I think this is the location I want right here. Partly because I've got some grass over there for a landing zone. And there's a survey stake right there with a... Uh, a piece of streamer on it so I know which way the wind's blowing. Let's get set up. Okay, we got Sky Candy loaded up with a C63, first launch of the day. We got some continuity. Launching in five, four, three, two, one. Not too bad. 100 yards away, maybe, if that. Got my new rocket friend Chuck here who's gonna watch the bottom stage for me. Turns out he lives less than a quarter mile from where my business is. He met me on YouTube, small world. <laughs> All right, supernova in five, four, three, two, one. Yes, that's gonna go high. <laughs> was quite a launch that thing must have went up I don't know how high possibly 1500 feet we'll see but right now I'm on the hunt for the booster uh, I saw it out of the corner of my eye and uh, it's around here somewhere oh look at that suck it SpaceX I can land right side up too what's missing from this picture nose cone and altimeter it's gone who knows where probably over in the woods that way maybe later I'll go take a walk okay you know for every mistake you make there's something to be learned so here's what's to be learned and in hindsight I'm like well yeah duh I did not glue this in and you can see by the tape it moved up a good 12 or 13 millimeters and what it did is it pushed the payload up and popped out the nose cone so Lessons learned, glue this in to the clear payload section and put a piece of tape around the nose cone next time. God, I may be able to find it. We'll see. Okay, the V2 is on the pad with a in it. All right, here we go. It's the first launch of the V2 3DP <sighs> rocket. Is it gonna work? I sure hope so. In five, four, three, two, one. Shit, I totally lost it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Searching the skies. I heard a thud, which I thought was a chute opening. But I'm not seeing it. Did it auger in somewhere? Shit's a pie, no. I don't know what it is with me and V2s. <laughs> the last V2 I lost. I saw the parachute come out, but I lost it many moons ago in Beaver Falls, New York, off in the woods. This one just went up. I was trying to track it on the camera. I heard a thud, which I was hoping was a chute, but I looked up and I didn't see anything, and it's a big orange chute. So time to go scout around and look for where it augered in, I guess. Okay, after watching the video that I just shot, I saw that it weathercocked like mad to the north. So I'm heading that way now to see if we can find it. I was looking like straight up above me, so it may have very well have been coming down with the chute and I just didn't see it. Hopefully somewhere over here is a successfully recoverable V2 rocket. So cresting over a hill here. Ah, yes, there it is. Ha, so happy. 
to find this. I thought for sure that I lost another V2. I think I'm gonna leave the weights the same, put a D motor in it, give it a spin test, and launch it again. So, here we go. Launching, second launch for the V2 3DP in five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, baby! That was a nice launch. Um, it arced a bit because it's so damn heavy. I think I'll try one more with um, an E engine again, and this time put a little, uh, little bit more weight in the nose. It looks like the tip of my nose cone popped off on landing, but the good news is, is it's right there. Yeah, I'm not sure why it did that. Did it break? Looks like maybe some of the 3D printing broke away. Yeah, it did. It's okay, I have super glue. Okay, launching in five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Oh, that's nice. And shoot, 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 shoot. Uh-oh. Come on, open up, baby! Oh! That was a hard landing. No worse for the wear. Shoot didn't even unfurl because what happened was I didn't really pay attention to where the shot cord and the nose cone was. It ended up passing through some of the shroud lines and entangled them, so it couldn't open. I'm going to load it with the last E motor I have, point it a little further that away this time, and see how it goes. Oops, I take back what I said about no worse for the wear when I was just loading it up. I noticed this but we can fix that. Good as new, well, almost. The coupling inside here was cracked too, so I had to take that apart and glue it. So I've got um, launch pad quality control here, checking out things. You better get out of the way, dude. Okay, the repair crew is done. <laughs> launch number four on another E12-6. Heading a little more that way this time, we hope. All right, here we go. Launching in five, four, three, two, one. Nope, that's going right over the woods and it's gonna be fun to find. Shit, ugh, damn. Well now, the physics behind that was weird. I actually had it slightly cocked in that direction, but maybe it's drag on the launch rod and so as it goes up, it's got drag this way. It sends it on a trajectory like that. It's the only thing I can think of. My dragon flies back. Yeah, I don't think you were very good luck. Bye-bye. So it's over there in some pretty dense woods. Uh, I'm gonna pack everything up, park the car, and see if I can even get into those woods. They are so dense. Um, this might be one of those ones that you just sacrifice to the rocket gods, because when I used to fly RC planes, uh, we flew at this place on Maui with a 400 foot cliff and if you lost one over the cliff you just left it alone It was bad juju to go get it. You had to sacrifice it to the airplane gods This might be for the rocket gods Well, I came home with one less rocket, but with a big grin on my face and uh, Chuck the guy that I met Gave me this walked up introduced himself and just handed this to me Goblin I wanted one of these when I was a kid so bad uh, I thought they were the coolest because they'll fly on um, D motors. So, 1,400 feet claimed altitude. That'll be fun. Got to buy another altimeter though. So I lost an altimeter. I lost a nose cone. I learned some things. Tape that darn payload nose cone on next time, and glue in the plug on the bottom of the payload section. You know, this is just stuff that you forget about when you've been away from the hobby for almost 50 years. And the V2. So be it. Uh, went over in the woods looking for it for a while. Those woods are dense. You can hardly move through them. I walked around in there for probably 45 minutes. Didn't see it anywhere. But this winter, when all the foliage is gone, I just might find it. And it's an ABS rocket with a nylon chute. There's some paper inside of it, so it may get a little beat up by the weather, but I could recover everything. Mostly what I miss is that parachute that I made yesterday. So. Oh well. 
Better luck next time. Something with me and V2s, so we just part ways. Lost one in high school too. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The link to that 3D printed V2 rocket is down there in the description. And until next time.